advising clients across the country. Here he is, your host, Jay Christopher Boyd. Welcome back to Something More with Chris Boyd, our second hour of the program. Thanks for being with us. Uh, we've got uh, a great program planned for you in addition to our usual financial topics. Um, we've also got a special guest, and I want to pass things to Jeff Perry, who is my co-host today, to uh, set us up, Jeff. All right. We've been, we've been teasing us a little bit, um, and it's going to be a great conversation I met our next guest, Tracy Ferry, uh, I don't know, a few years ago when I was attending, when I lived on the Cape and I was attending a group called the Cape Cod Christian Professionals that was started, I think, out of the Covenant Community Church in Sandwich. And once a, once a month, we'd get together and welcome everyone in the community who wants to come and share some fellowship and some stories. And one of those months, as I was sitting there drinking my coffee, having a Danish, um, this gentleman got up, looked like a rock star, um, and he, <laughs> I, I knew that he was associated with the church somehow, but I really didn't know who he was in, until he got up and gave his story, his testimony, and it was Tracy, and I, w- I love the story, I, I love the I love the whole story, and just to tease it a little bit, and then I'll introduce him and get into, let him tell his story rather than me. Uh, Tracy's a bass guitarist. I'm sure he's got some other musical skills, but this is what I know, Tracy. So you can correct me if I'm wrong. He's played with some very well-known bands, uh, White Cross, Striker, Boston, and he looks like a rock star. He sounds like a rock star, but he's also got this awesome story about his faith and his journey and what he's doing now. And as Chris and I were talking about who should we have on the show coming up, and we were talking about the something more segment, um, Tracy came right to mind. Like people want to know this story. When I was sitting sitting there in the church, uh, Covenant Community Church in Sandwich, I was like, "This st- everybody should hear this story. It's <laughs> it's interesting because of what he's done, but it's it's great for people of faith to hear this." And so, Tracy, thanks for agreeing to come on the show. It is totally my pleasure. Um, you know, everybody loves to talk about themselves. So how could I resist? <laughs> well, we appreciate you talking a little bit about yourself and your, your journey um, to to our to our listeners as well. So, um, so I read your bio. You know, after I saw you at the church that day, I said, "Who is this guy?" And, and so I, I read what's online. You know, your bio about you. you grew up in Indiana, right? And you um, correct started to get exposed to music was were you always like did you just say the bass guitar is mine or ha- have you learned like all types of all types of musical instruments well the the fun part of that story is um it really has to do with mentorship and i i stress that highly so that would be the first point i i walked into a classroom around fourth grade and the band director who he was looking into the future. Okay, who am I going to have years down the road filling my my chairs in the band room? And so he starts, you know, interviewing us and mm-hmm. showing us the instruments. And he says, uh, you know, what what instruments are you interested? In? I said, I I don't know. I want. And he was like, How about this one? And it was something small, a trumpet. I'm like, Get anything bigger? And well, we got this trombone. <laughs> goes to the baritone, bigger. And he's like, Well, son judging by your size and he pointed the, to the tuba and he's like <laughs> and I'm like that's it that's the one and he's like i don't know he's, so he stuck me in there and it was a sousaphone so i had to crawl in there and and uh i didn't fit but he he, he started directing my musical path as a, as a young man and uh i i started on the tuba and as as i uh, launched into I was also simultaneously picking up the guitar. Uh, my my dad was killed when I was uh, at the end of my 12th year here on this planet. And I had gotten a guitar for Christmas just before that. Hmm. And that guitar became a, a real sense of comfort through yep. this terrible time my family went through. And uh, so music has always been medicinal. <laughs> hmm. So stuff that people are interested in, there's there's always some significant uh component there that they they sought comfort through it or or whatnot so i i was simultaneously playing guitar 
I was learning the tuba. And then as it progressed, he got me into this string bass and uh, I was playing percussion. So I was, became this kind of jack of all trades with music. And then at the end of my uh, senior year, he, I, uh, again, no dad. So he was a, a, a very Big part of your life, right? Yeah. yeah. That's why you mentioned mentor. I get it. Yeah. A mentor. And he actually filled out the paperwork for me to go to Berkeley college of music. He suggested I go there. I'd ne I really ne never heard of it and, and, uh, had no intention of moving to Boston. And so, uh, I got accepted just as soon as I <laughs> literally pulled the cap and gown off, got in a U-Haul truck and drove to Boston and started the summer courses there. Wow. And it was, it was during my time in Boston that I, I met my lovely wife, who is a native Cape Cotter. Hey, uh, so now the picture is coming together. Yeah, right? that's how yeah. <laughs> down the road, that's how I ended up here on Cape Cod. Um, but uh, as I, I, I got involved in, in music and recording uh my intention i was trying to be responsible <laughs> my intention was to learn the recording side of it mm -hmm. and then it, as a fallback if if i wanted to pur pursue performance but i ended up performing more because people would ask me to come in for sessions to play the instruments rather than record the instruments and um that that was my my first start of my journey and so I'm sure you had a lot of other experiences of playing here and there, but when did you like, what's your big break? When did you go from studying music, learning music to performing at a level that you consider to be your break into the industry? You know, I have a, a saying that uh, preparation plus opportunity mm. equals success. Yep. And I, I explain that to my students. I teach music and um you could be the best closet guitar player or pianist, literally just be a, a phenomenal player. But if no one hears you, if you're mm -hmm. not out and you don't get that opportunity for someone to hear you, you'll just be the maybe one of these YouTube, which is different now. You can be discovered on YouTube. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> In fact, the, the the singer for Boston was discovered on YouTube. So that's and he had never really been out playing much professionally before that. It's an amazing story, too. But um, the other side of it is opportunity. You could get an opportunity and you, this is, could be your big break. But if, if you're not prepared right. for that opportunity, you might just be a poser and like, hey, you know, he, he might have the look and the whole, you know, personality, but he just didn't deliver. There's a funny story. I was in a band called Plum in Nashville and I, it was Neil Diamond's son came in to audition on drums he had the look, his kit was just outrageous. <laughs> and they counted off, you know, tss, 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 and he just started playing so quiet, like a mouse. And like, wait, what happened to this, you know, big <laughs> overture that we were expecting? <laughs> and so he didn't get the gig. And so <laughs> you got to, you know. It might you gotta, get you in the door, but it doesn't get you the you gig, You got to right? back it up with, with you know, you got to back it up with all that hard work and preparation you know, in between all this, and I, I know I, um, I had my own share of tragic incidences, but I was jumped during my time in a, oh, I did read that the area of Boston and in Boston. Yeah. And through that, I what, feel like, what do you mean by jumped? Okay. Mugged, I, right? I, mugged, but we were actually run off the road on a, in our small, we were in a small vehicle. We were coming back from a concert in Worcester and we were literally chased you know 70 miles an hour down the road trying to get away from this crazy gang of guys being in on the car and and uh they followed us ended up running us off the road and and uh i got clubbed and beat up very badly uh That's it was right. on route nine uh near framingham we didn't quite make it to boston <laughs> but they followed that's us where, that's, that's where i grew up framingham yeah that's how far these guys followed us and uh but during that time in the ambulance, I really felt like I was coming face to face with, I need to know my, my creator better. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I had prayed a prayer as an eight-year-old kid from a neighbor. And when I came home, my mom said, Hey, I don't want you going back to those crazy religious fanatics, you know? And why? Because they told me about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so that's crazy, right? That's but it's crazy, but it's life. Yeah. 
And so um, it was shortly after that, I was invited to church literally for the first time in my life as a 20 year old. And I responded to the message. And so again, this medicinal experience became a very in intricate part of my life and, and would, would direct my path from, you know, so you see how things work like mm -hmm. that. Mm. Are and, you uh, consider, is that uh, what you'd call born again? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Evangelical born again, yeah. you know, I, I, just somebody who follows, reads, and hopefully knows <laughs> what the Bible says. Yeah. It's, um, I'm currently a student uh, at Boston Baptist College. I'm on my senior uh, seminar right now, and I'm almost done. I'm going to be turning in one of my long 18 page papers here and <laughs> when we get off uh, off of this uh, call on this beautiful saturday <laughs> <laughs> so but um anyway so my big break really came uh i was discipled that's very important uh, yes. it, I, I i really had a rough time when i first kind of responded to the gospel message i really had a rough time following this walk uh, because I didn't understand, I didn't know it, it and I met some people in California who brought me under their, their their wing, and my wife, and we were discipled together. It was at almost like a college level, and it was a year long, and I have to say, again, mentorship. I I, I was mentored by, by this, uh, we call him Pastor Bob out there. He now lives in Nashville. He kind of followed us to Nashville. <laughs> um, but uh, this mentorship got my feet on the ground, planted so where I could, I, could rock, yeah. I could stand. You know the word uh, manipulate. So many people seem to be manipulated in this crazy world. I, I looked up some definitions. One of the opposites of manipulate is to stand. And that's mm. such a biblical concept. Just it stand is. firm in what, what you believe. And uh, But it's deep. I, I uh, Hopefully, I'm getting deeper and deeper knowing my stuff it's like when you get in that boat it, it's hard it's you know it's hard to navigate the farther you get out there you know we have different instruments now but if you imagine in the in the old days it, the harder you get in the deeper waters it's hard to navigate so, so it's 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 so important to be a good navigator mm -hmm. you know and we have to navigate our lives and so by big break finally getting to that uh, <laughs> there was a guy who if you could look it up on YouTube, go and look up uh, 1999 Prince, right? And there's right. a guy, he's got this big uh, Chinese sun bandana, and he's Prince's guitar player. And he sings back up, and he's great. Well, he became a born-again Christian and started a label uh, start called Star Song in Nashville. And he was developing bands, recording bands. He was an executive producer for records. And if they needed somebody, he would have to do the legwork sometimes to find the, you know, the missing elements. So I got a call and this was, this was my opportunity. He called, I, and I don't know how he got my information, but he called and said, I've got a, a band who needs a recording and touring bass bassist. I went out there, did the recording, made the cut. And we we're still friends. We, we still communicate through social media, uh, but he gave me that big break. And through that, I was able to get exposure and different people heard me. I've played in 25 different countries by now. Um, and was that was White Cross. This was with White Cross, with Rebecca yeah. St. James, with Plum. Yeah. And now okay. an interesting point about Rebecca St. James. Um, she was, she actually won a Grammy. Um, I was in her band at the time, but her brothers who used to set up my gear and set up the lights because it was kind of a family affair. They were from Australia and she had like seven brothers and sisters. <laughs> and so they all had jobs, <laughs> even as kids out touring on the road. Well, their name's Luke and Joel Smallbone, <laughs> and they are the lead singers of the band for King and Country. Have you heard of that band? Now they are. You're saying yes, yes, yeah. that's them, Luke and Joel. Oh, that's her little brothers. Talk about used a to, small world, huh? Yeah, and they they used to set up my gear, and uh, their their father just called me last week because they're putting a new movie out, and he was asking about, hey, do you have a song, or could you direct me? Um, so 
I don't know what the movie is, but uh, for King and Country movie, if you Google that, it's coming out soon. It's kind of about their whole life story. Hey, awesome. Well, um, we just need to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk more with Tracy Ferry. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Something More with Chris Boyd. I'm Chris Boyd, Certified Financial Planner Practitioner. I'm here with Jeff Perry. We're talking with our guest, Tracy Ferry. Uh, he's a, been a professional musician and uh, worked in bands like Boston and uh, others. And uh, we were talking about his story, getting to know his his situation. And and I want to hear more about um, you know, where you are today with all this. But I, before we jump back in, Jeff's, I'm sure, going to have other questions. Uh, I'd love to just, if I could, just for a moment, ask you about um, Nashville seems like a pretty important city in uh, Christian uh, contemporary music. Um, did you have a role in any of that uh, while you were there? Uh, was that a, an important part of your your professional music, music, musician journey or this uh, transition in your life? Uh, how did that uh, context put, play into your situation? That's a great question. I uh, moved to Nashville because I was invited by Des Dickerson to come and record. And I met so many people there and there's a gazillion auditions going on. If you, you know, get out there and you mix and mingle with people. And one of the bands that I had joined was a, a band called Plum. Now, interestingly, Plum has a, a lot of music on music, on soundtracks. Um, if you ever watched the movie, Bruce Almighty, mm -hmm. well, uh, there's a scene when he uh, is, he's playing God or whatever and, can write messages in the clouds and there's a song that call, comes on it's called god shaped hole and it's only played for a second uh but there's all kinds of movies that the band plum uh got to have feature featured and on the soundtracks and so the owner of the band tiffany arbuckle and so tiffany arbuckle lee now she had a contract with curb records and mike curb and she would do all these demos for stuff like that. And she's like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to hire my band because they're my guys. I could hire anybody I want to. And so I uh, equate my, a lot of my recording experience from working with her. And it was such a blessing because she could have asked anybody to play and she uh, would, would ask me. And so Nashville be became a very important part of my life at some point my wife and I would watch all these movies with ocean scenes and <laughs> you know the Cape Cod architecture, you know, with the shingled little houses and and it, we just couldn't take it anymore. We've got to <laughs> get back. Huh? We need some water, and so we just <laughs> literally packed up. And in the process, and I said goodbye. The the band Plum actually packed up the U-Haul. That you know we left on very friendly terms, and uh, during that crossover of coming to Cape Cod, I got a call from the band Striper. And uh, Striper is the premier Christian rock crossover with videos on, you know, from the MTV days of the MTV countdown. And uh, I joined their band. I had previously played with the lead singer for his solo tour. So I knew some of the music, but not all of it. And I would literally um, jumped right into uh, a concert. They said, we're kind of in a jam. We need you to show up at Disney. We're going to fly you from England because I had to do so the rest of my shows with Plum. Flew from England. I learned with my headphones, learned the songs of making charts out. And I, I show up at uh, Disneyland. We rehearsed in Mickey Mouse's dressing room. And I'm not kidding. The <laughs> costumes hanging on the, the rack with, uh, you know, and we rehearsed basically, to, okay, here, here's how we're going to start the song. Here's how we're going to finish trance, you know, um, work our way into the next song, all the segues. That's basically what we rehearsed. And I went out there, we did three sets because it was one of these, they let people into the section of the park, do the concert, close it, let the next section. So we did three sets. It went fantastic. Next thing you know, I'm in the band uh, Striper. And during my time, I was in the band about nine years and during my time, um, there was the the station nightclub fire that yes. had happened in Rhode Island. Anniversary, very recently, right? Yeah. Exactly, and so 
uh, one of these bands not that weren't there, but one of the community of bands of that genre put together this benefit to help these families. Right. I remember that. And it was on VH1. Well, during that time, Striper was recording an album and we recorded a um, a cover of the song Peace of Mind by Boston. And so because, and we, we were given permission and actually Tom Schultz, uh, it's Schultz, not Schultz. So many people say that incorrectly. Um, Tom Schultz did the lead guitar work on the bridge of the song, which was very special. It's the only time Tom has been on any other recordings outside mm -hmm. of his own uh very unique and i but i didn't meet him during that time of the recording because it was one of these i'll email you the and we'll drop it in and that kind of thing but we did the concert and we invited uh tom Scholz and gary peel who were the two guitar players in boston they joined striper on stage at the duncan donut center uh, i met him briefly in the dress you know hockey you know <laughs> locker room uh, not a dressing room but we use it as a dressing room so we go out there we do the show i meet him and months later um i got a call from him and i had already left the band striper uh because they were going to do their 25th anniversary and have the original members and and so i'm like thanks but they don't you don't need two bass players for this it just yep. didn't make sense so i bailed out but shortly after that i got a call from tom Scholz, and okay I had mentioned before uh, all these auditions that I have done. I didn't audition for Boston. I was just called and he's, he's the, the quiet, deep voice. So would you like to tour with the band Boston? And I played it off. I'm like, um, hang on. Let me, let me think about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jokingly. I shouldn't answer too quick. <laughs> I was, I was joking though, but right. I, I'm like, I, yeah, I think I could work this out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, next thing I know, uh, weeks later, because this was a last minute call to do this. Um, uh, weeks later, I'm rehearsing with him. And again, I, w I was prepared and right. he had done some investigation about how, I, how I prepare. And, and, and at the time, uh, because I had, left the band striper i was in a wedding band and i i had not played cover songs because i'm doing all this original music from nashville playing in these original bands i didn't know cover music i had to learn like 500 songs <laughs> in about a week and show up for my first wedding and that's a whole another story but he did some investigation and he actually said if you can learn all those songs in a week certainly you can learn our 14 15 songs <laughs> in a couple <laughs> weeks <laughs> and so it I'm worked out and i felt like it just was supernatural stepping into that it was such a a natural fit and i just almost felt like there was something just supernatural guiding my hand to the right mm -hmm. parts when he would show me something um that you know maybe expected it was going to take me a while to learn he'd go well can you do this as do -do 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 -do? and i would do do -do 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 -do. And he would look at me funny, like, how did you do that? I would go, I don't know. I don't know. It's a gift. And it was weird. Um, and so here I am. Uh, you had mentioned that we met uh, at the Covenant mm -hmm. Community Church. This right. is my office. I'm the now the worship pastor mm -hmm. here at Covenant Community Church. Um, Boston took a hi hiatus in 2017 was their last tour. And uh, if there was plans to go out shortly after that, we we got hit with the whole COVID thing. And right. so I've been here uh, a little over five years now. And uh, that's how we met. And I'm, I, I where, put together. Where is the church? It is. It's in East Sandwich, right across the street. I'm looking out the window here. It's right across the street, street from Sandwich High School. And it's uh, 360. That's easy to remember. Quaker mm -hmm. Meeting House Road. Our services okay. are 10 a.m. on Sunday, uh, so that's tomorrow. A very, <laughs> a very, a very welcoming church, I'll say. That's Thank well. you. Yep. Um, and, how uh, does your church fit into the spectrum of uh, faith communities? Um, oftentimes, uh, you know, churches affiliate with uh, one denomination or another. Uh, how would you characterize um, your church? Well, Cape Cod is unique and when I first moved here, I had this mindset, I'm moving out of the Bible belt. And, you know, I had been trained well, moving out of the Bible belt, 
And when I moved here, I, I thought to myself, I need to find camaraderie. I need to, I need to know who, who shares this faith with me. So I, I found out about a lot of the churches here and did a lot of investigating. And uh, the point of me saying this, I feel like a lot of the Cape Cod churches are very well connected. I'm actually doing a Thrive concert that is a multi-church event. Um, it's uh, in the middle of March at Cape Cod Church. And the worship band for that evening, it's going to be great. It's made up of all the worship band leaders of various churches. So there's going to be like oh, nine nine worship leaders up there rocking out like crazy. And <laughs> it, it is. It rocks. I what is that? It's Thrive. Look up Thrive Cape Cod. All right. um, it's, I think, the 10th of March. It's a Friday night. And Saturday, there's classes and kind of breakout groups, but it's a wonderful event. It is. So, I've been wow. to those conferences, and, and they are worth attending and also very welcoming to all faiths. They encourage yes. all faiths to come together for this conference. Yeah. And more specifically, uh, Covenant Community, Community Church. It used to be Covenant Baptist Church. Uh, years ago, they changed it to Covenant Community Church, but it's part of the American Baptist denomination. Okay, thanks. Um, you you mentioned um, you know you, the importance of mentorship uh, in both aspects of your development of your you know professional life in in music and now in in uh, your spiritual journey. You mentioned past, Pastor Bob as a mentor. Um, it sounds like an interesting you know thread to to talk more about and and how you try to continue that uh, effort in your own activity, I imagine, because you've mentioned it a couple of times, it must be important to you. You also talked about your wife being um, part of your journey. You, you know, uh, it's, oftentimes people don't go through their faith experience um, simultaneously. Um, uh, would you want to comment on either of those uh, considerations? Yeah, it's very important. You know, it might be seem like an overused uh, statement, but to be equally yoked, and it's, you know, that geek draws the picture of the, the oxen right. treading together. Uh, it's very important to have someone who is working cooperation in any uh, element of life, whether, you know, again, as a teacher, if the kids don't cooperate, they're really missing out on the, the experiences I bring to the table, the, the information I bring to the table. In a marriage, if there's not cooperation, how much of your life is going to be spent in friction rather than progressing together, working, working together. Um, so that the cooperation, if you're in a band or if I'm leading, um, you, we're going to get a lot more done at rehearsal. If they understand, okay, this guy's in charge. This is my role here. Um, and it's not a, 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 like an ego thing or a bullying thing. Everybody in their life is going to be at some tier in their journey absolutely so be understand where your tier is at that time and do the best job at that you know if if you know to, if you're making tacos make the best taco that's right at, and then you might own the franchise one day right you know it, the, something i like to tell people make your boss's job easier if you're not making his job easier, you may not be doing your job correctly. <laughs> yeah, you and, become and people, yeah, yeah, people want, again, when I, when I walked in the Boston situation, he didn't have to teach me parts. He didn't have to s sit down and, and like, oh, you know, I know we haven't toured for two years. You know, I even, you know, when I walked in that situation, the first day of rehearsal, um, you know, I'm plugging into his gear, but the previous person who had played that position or whatever, it just didn't sonically didn't sound right. And I recognized it. He recognized it. And, you know, the normal situation, he'd come over and be tweaking it. That costs so much time. I said, I'll get, I'll fix it. When we come in tomorrow, I have this thing set up. So I came in like a half hour early. I had, you know, I, I just had guys put the lights up and I went in there and I, you know, there's a gazillion graphs, you know, <laughs> on there. There's compression and all these, it's a really complicated rig. And I, I but I knew what I was doing. And, and when we started rehearsing, 
he, uh, Tom stopped us and looked over and he said, everyone, please listen to what I'm about. He says, if anyone touches the base rig from here out, <laughs> you're fired. He was, hopefully he was joking, but I don't, <laughs> but yeah. he was the emphatic, you know, nature of what he was saying is like, it sounds perfect. Like every tour, we never had to keep tweaking it. And it's like, set it and forget it. <laughs> Tracy, I got, I got one question for you. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if this is the last one or not. We'll see what how much time we have left. What's your favorite song to play? Like, what's the song that has touched you the most as a performer? Well, um, there, I, I've, I've played so many different genres. Right. And, you know, I, I have my, my church music. And um, I love playing the the old hymns. Mm. And And here's why. I didn't grow up with the hymns. They're not moldy oldies to me, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, I, my, my church journey was more new Christian music and even heavier Christian music at first from the, the pastor that discipled my wife and I, it was actually pretty heavy Christian rock music. And again, Striper was, was very heavy yeah. Christian rock music, but it's being in this situation now, I really appreciate the, uh, the message of the hymns they're very deep theological songs and they were constructed by people who had a very good grasp of music theory um you know they weren't kids in jeggings writing these tunes <laughs> uh, no offense but uh, well, i understand what you're saying and so i i really i really love playing the hymns now boston music my favorite song is don't look back Okay. I love the message of it. Mm. Uh, I, I I love the consistent bass line. Um, there's all these cool little licks. Tom Scholes played the bass parts on those records. A lot of people don't know that. He he played the keyboard parts. He played the guitar, the acoustic, um, and the bass parts. And so that's a lot of pressure when you walk in. He actually played those parts. So you don't question, <laughs> you don't right. question the guy that wrote the songs if he brings up a you know, a question about what you're doing. I never knew that, that he played all those parts on the recordings. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. So so I, see, um, I imagine that um, your life experience gives you a unique role um, in how you relate to your community as a witness. And uh, so that must be a great experience to, you know, you draw people in that might relate to you in a way that they might not relate to maybe another pastor, another church, another circumstance. And so I uh, imagine you're doing great things and I appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Any parting thoughts as we wind down? Well, just, you know, we've spoken about faith. Faith is not followed by perfect people. Mm -hmm. If you read the Bible, if you can find one other perfect example other than jesus please show me actually i found i found one chapter go to genesis 24 it doesn't mention a name which is very interesting but it mentions the um servant to the servant who goes to find a wife for isaac um we think his name's eleazar but it, it doesn't say that but he does everything perfect on his journey and does exactly what he's supposed to do by his employer abraham mm -hmm. so doesn't that tie into our our whole story today he <laughs> made his he made his his employer's job easier and he did it perfect read that whole chapter it's fantastic you sound a lot like bill belichick you know tracy do your <laughs> job right <laughs> yeah this do guy your job and do it well this servant does it perfectly yep all right well unfortunately we're out of time thank you for being here um we appreciate the uh the your story and your enthusiasm your passion it comes across and it's fun to hear about great uh, having you gracie thank you so much we're gonna take a Got break it. and we'll be back after this all right enjoy the show Welcome back to our final segment of something more with Chris Boyd and again I'm here with Jeff Perry and Jeff, um, that was a fun segment. Um, thanks for getting that guest. Um, I've of... heard, as I said at the beginning of the segment, I've heard Tracy's story at the at the Cape Cod Christian Professional Group. Um, 
but it's just as captivating to hear. I heard new things, of course, but yeah. it's yeah. just as captivating to listen to him and his think about being a musician in that musician world. And I think everybody knows what I mean. You know, it's, it's fast paced. It's, it's, you know, all those things that go on along with rock and roll, right? Um, Sex, drugs, rock and roll. There you go. Yeah. All, all those things. And I think of associate. Here's, here's a man of deep faith and, you know, married young and he, yeah, he's pulled it off. He's, he's like gotten through all that, had a great career happy marriage and now he's a worship pastor and yeah. solidly grounded and sharing his journey and his lessons and he's inspiring you know i'm glad yeah. I'm, I'm glad that this is an example of those you which you said in the first hour about the something more segments and why they're so valuable i think it, that's it, exactly it it can be inspiring it can give you a sense of um i can do that too you know what i mean right. uh, that that and everyone's journey is different what where people find fulfillment uh, mm -hmm. all of these things and you know as much as um we're a money show um you know laced throughout our themes with our 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 music at times and um some of the things we talk about it's important to remember it's not just about money you, you know money is a tool Correct. and Correct. it's an important tool but it's only a tool and what's really important is that we have a sense of uh, purpose and a sense of fulfillment that, you know, we're moving towards something, whatever that is. And that can be different for different people, but yeah, I think um, stories like these give us, um, and I, and I love hearing different kinds of success stories as well as a business owner, because uh, I find that inspiring, you know, uh, different, you know, cause inevitably invariably um, people who have great success generally have had great failure that they've had to overcome they've certainly had challenges it's not always and, the case but well that's... tracy talked about you know the death of his father and other hardship. things yeah. hardship right yeah. i mean we, we all face it there's yeah. not there's not too many people who get through a, a life without facing some type of tragedy or challenge or however you want to phrase it and, yeah um, well one of the things he uh, talked about that was interesting was the idea of uh the what was the way he referenced that yoke um Yes. So well, like the oxens yeah. and the two oxens with the yoke, which is the device that keeps them uh, connected and making two oxens stronger than two oxens because of the, the way it's designed, but they have to work together. And yeah, I, I, uh, that, the I don't know what you, you thought of. Yeah. I always think about, you know, stories and translate them to other things and that made me think about as you just said couples we were thinking about the same thing we yeah. see a lot of couples back to finances for a minute yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we see a lot of couples who come in uh, either as clients or just people having their situation reviewed or whatever it is and they're they're not pulling they're not pulling the same not way right? together yeah they're not pulling the same and I think way a lot of times people are at different places at different times and that's challenging um different gifts different strengths Mm -hmm. You know, um, one person is into the financial, one person is not, but you have to have some shared communication and uh, be moving toward the same goals ultimately, which isn't always the case for all couples where, you know, that can be challenging and frustrating at times. But if you are working together, you can find it uh, more uh, achievable, you know, to reach your goals compromise certainly is a part of it but especially when you're getting you know you can have broad goals in the beginning like we want to save for a comfortable retirement right mm. but as you get closer you have to talk again <laughs> talk yeah. frequently and what does that mean to one person it might mean travel the world and to the other person it might mean doing gardening and not going anywhere right yes depending on your circumstances and so and that can it. create some difficulties it can for or I want to live in the South. I don't want to leave the kids. Um, oh, okay. You know, that's a challenge, right? You know what I mean? The kids South. Yeah. No, you know <laughs> oh, what I mean? Like, right. this is a common thing um, that I, I see um, as uh, it could be, you know, um, all kinds of different, you know, challenges. Um, uh, someone wants to spend more, someone wants to save more mm. you know, at different times of life, well, right? right? So How people view it. Yeah. So, you know, um, there's no easy answer to those uh, considerations other than, you know, uh, to, to be open, 
you know, and have, have discussion about it. This comes out a lot in our meetings where, you know, the first meeting with new clients where we call it the get to you, get to know you meeting. Yeah. And when both parties are there, it can create an opportunity to start that discussion. And, you know, with the help of Tracy was talking about mentors, uh, some level financial planners are mentors as well. And it can create an opportunity to help the process, at least initiate the process if it's not ongoing or help to define the process if it is. And at the end of the day, everybody's better off. Both, both parties are better off knowing and planning and pulling that sled, if you will, pulling that, yeah. Connected to that yoke and going in the same direction. Wow. In that case, yeah. Well, I thought that yeah, that maybe this would be an opportunity for us to talk about some uh, some lessons. You know, uh, different. We have different uh, meetings throughout uh, each week and over the years, and um, invariably, you you come across things that are you, you see repeatedly. Different people, yeah, same themes, story. right? Themes yeah. develop. Yep. And so I was thinking about that this week that. Um, you know, one of the themes that came across is um, there are times when you see people have legacy assets and um, these might be uh, individual stocks. It can be, um, you know, other kinds of investments, but something that um, has uh, become sizable in a portfolio yeah. and maybe outsized. Too big, right? So. Too big. Maybe it's it, in, maybe it's a stock option that somebody had and they bought stock in the company they worked for. That's common. Great right? example. That's a right. great. That's very common. And uh, whether it's through their work plan mm -hmm. or, uh, in retirement, or whether it's through uh, just the, like stock options, as an example, those are both common occasions. So you know you find that okay, uh, what happens when this becomes an increasing part of the portfolio? And sometimes these, you know, can be that it actually performed very well, and people have a, an affinity. They do to retain that because they it's good it, to right? me kind of right. mindset. Yes. But what ends up happening is if it ends up being too big as a part of the portfolio, that can end up creating risk, and you don't want. We've seen this before yeah. as well. People had so much of a concentration in a single company that if something goes wrong, it can be not only their employment income right. is tied to that company, but it can be that their their wealth is tied to that company. And if something goes wrong, they've got a real problem. Right. Too many eggs in one basket to say. Too many simply. eggs in one basket. Right. So diversification, if it's not rule number one, it's pretty close, right? I, I think of it as rule number one. So if you're, you know, in that situation, you've got to think about um, techniques and ways to maybe mitigate that risk. And there may be different ways to do it. Some may have more tax consequence than others, but there's also, you know, there's other, there's various tops, possibilities, whether it's the use of options or actually setting out a schedule to, to, you know, scale back out of those. Right. There's lots of companies that can produce good returns. Um, so being concentrated in one Greater than five is our typical uh, target, 5% to 10%. You're getting to a point where you've got more risk than you might want to have. Absolutely. Okay. And it That's can be, it doesn't have to be the scenario we laid out. It can be an investment that you inherited, or maybe you have a single, single, even a single mutual fund. You could be just not diversified, even though you think you may be. Uh, inherited stock is a great example where, um, it can be very, very concentrated because the, in the case of the, uh, the parent, they didn't want to incur the capital gain, <laughs> but now that, and a lot of times the next generation will be, well, it worked for mom and dad, you know, that right. kind of mindset. But if now you get a step up in basis, you've got a lot more flexibility than maybe mom and dad had as to how to deal with that, uh, highly appreciated stock. You got some flexibility in a mutual fund. It can be more diversified. But even that, if it's too sizable, are you getting the the kind of diversity that you want in the way you structure your portfolio? And right. do you the way we look at it is we want some control in that process. We want to be able to, you know, tinker with the way we structure things. Sometimes uh, you don't have that in a mutual fund that does all the it makes it simple, but it may not do things the way you'd want them done, given the opportunity. 
Yeah, good point. One of the things that came up, you know, I mentioned I went to that uh, tax um, program for Ed Slot um, last week, and um, I already had oh, some I, things come up. I saw your homework book. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've got this. Uh, it was it was like I'm lugging it around. It's like just bumping the the microphone here. It looks like a phone book, right? It's it uh, like. 400 some odd pages that we've got like 32 sticky notes on i've got sticky notes sticking all out of the thing (laughs) oh i'm gonna talk about that um yeah i got a little homework to do you're right um to identify things we need to deal with and bring back to our our clients um with you know ideas and strategies but one of the things that came up uh this week is i i had a client who um notified me that uh, because of their job situation they had excess contributions to their um, IRAs. They'd been doing regular IRA contributions and it turns out um, they wanted to deal with that. So we know how to deal with it. Yeah. Um, they, yeah. Have to, they better deal with it. <laughs> yeah. And there is a, the IRS a, clock. Deals with it. There is a yeah. clock on that right. when you have to think about uh, how to undo that situation. Um, so, uh, and then one of the things you don't always think about is uh, the earnings uh, have... Well, any you know, limits? Well, if you if, no, I don't mean that. I mean the uh, the account had uh, either gained or oh, lost. Had a gain, oh. and there's excess. Uh, in in you have to you have to take a percentage That's of right. the earnings as well. It's not just the contribution if it's been more just than a day, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. So you got that kind of thing to deal with. Yeah. So already we're finding some benefit out of this uh, resource. Uh, that was one quick thing. And then somebody else had a question about their uh, contributions to their, their solo 401k independent individual 401k, whether they could uh, get an extension uh, on their contribution, their, their matching contribution. By the date that, 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 yeah. For the extension of their taxes. So things like that. It's um, I think because of, secure 2.0 and other things um the next two to three years is going to be a very tax centered part of our business i think it's going to have plenty to do with it you're right yeah more than ever tax planning and considerations of moves to make now and considerations of what may happen after 2025 are going to be more and more in focus Well, with that, we've got to wrap it up. Thanks for being with us throughout the show today. And Jeff, thanks for all your contribution as well. And if you have questions as it relates to your financial planning or portfolio management, don't hesitate to reach out to Asset Management Resources. You can find us at amrfinancial.com or give us a call at 866-771-8901. Until next week, keep striving for something more. You're listening to Something More with Chris Boyd, Financial Talk Show. Asset Management Resources, LLC, and J. Christopher Boyd, CFP, provide investment advice on an individual basis to clients only. Proper advice depends on a complete analysis of all facts and circumstances. The information given on this program is in the nature of general financial comments and cannot be relied upon as pertaining to your specific situation. AMR, LLC, cannot guarantee that using the information from this show will generate profits or ensure freedom from loss. Listeners should consult their own financial advisors or conduct their own due diligence before making any financial decisions.